Hey guys, what's up and what's going down? How are y'all doing today? It's the Dizzy One here back with another video and my voice is kind of killing me So we're just gonna take it easy today and be a little bit more relaxed have a calmer demeanor instead of being hyped about the game We're gonna have a discussion and actually try to get something accomplished here <laughs> Harrison Barnes is on this Maverick squad and I actually forgot about that I thought we started this season after his trade to the Kings, but apparently not with that being said do let me know in the comment section below what you think. I want to know your opinion. If you don't have the time, just let me know with a quick answer. But if you can't explain it, do give your opinions and your thoughts below. The question for today is this. Which team do you think is the better team? The 72-10 and 10 Chicago Bulls with Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen and company, or the 73-9 and 9 Warriors? Now, before I give my opinion, I want to talk about the Warriors for a little bit because... I did get to experience them firsthand more so than others because I did live in the Bay Area and I do live in the Bay Area and I played a lot of basketball at the time. I played a lot of basketball, four to seven hours a day and I got to meet a lot of people and not just like play with them but actually be friends with them, talk to them, go out and hang out with them, all that stuff. So with that being said, there weren't that many Warriors fans visibly before this season. There was probably about two or three and you know those guys grew up here in the Bay Area maybe most likely or they really just were Warriors fans. But out of nowhere when they started breaking the record and they actually did break the record that's when people just went crazy. When they had a chance I started noticing that more and more people were rocking Warriors gear and it was like bro just a minute ago two days ago you weren't even a Warriors fan and now you're out here rocking their gear. I feel as though many people just wanted to be accepted into the group, you know? And it was kind of frustrating because like, wow, just that's crazy. But that was the Warriors phenomenon at the time. That's what was going on. And when they did break the record and made the playoffs, everybody was like, wow, this is the greatest team of all time, at least here in the Bay Area. That was just a, a crazy experience. They ended up losing in the finals, and it wasn't necessarily because of one thing or the other. There was a lot of things that ended up happening that went against their favor. The first thing being LeBron James's greatness. Uh, the finals just was crazy. LeBron outplayed everyone on his team and everyone on the Warriors team. So from LeBron's standpoint, he just outperformed every single player on that court twice over. And they ran up against LeBron's greatness. Kyrie played great. K-Love and the team played great. Um, people went ahead and because of hindsight were like, they shouldn't have gone for the record. They should have rested their players. But if you look back at the playoffs, the first two series, they were just being the regular old Warriors. They were dominating teams, being crazy and doing what they had to do. And no one could keep up with them until Kevin Durant and the Oklahoma City Thunder took them 3-1 and eventually um, lost in a seven game series. And then of course they went up and, and played against LeBron and then they lost, finally. Um, so hindsight is 2020. If you're a competitor though, I feel as though you wouldn't have wanted to rest, you would have wanted to go for the record and actually leave your mark and a lasting legacy and have your name talked about for years and years to come. That is a, something we never thought was going to be broken because the 72 and 10 Chicago Bulls, it, it was like, wow, when they accomplished it, that was a record that was going to last. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the Warriors just demolished that record. Yes, by one game, but by how they demolished it was crazy because they introduced a new style of play, small ball, which was revolutionary in how it was executed. It was executed to excellence. The death lineup was something that worked because of a few things. Mainly Draymond Green's ability to switch onto centers and actually guard them and get rebounds for himself and box out for his teammates to get rebounds. The team defense, the switching that was allowed because of the size of Klay Thompson, Andre Iguodala, and Harrison Barnes being able to guard one through four and have Curry mainly play on the weakest defender most of the time. It worked marvelously for that team, and it was just spectacular to watch. Now, with that being said, I personally believe that they would not have beaten the Chicago Bulls. 
Michael Jordan is the main reason they wouldn't have beaten the Chicago Bulls, but if you want to go a little further, their defense, I think, would have been more pressuring than the Golden State Warriors defense. Honestly, in my opinion, I feel as though the Chicago Bulls would have beaten the Warriors because Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen would have taken their turn on Curry, always having a fresh defender on him, and even when they were on the bench, I believe they had Ron Harper coming off that bench, and he was a great defender as well, like a 6'4", 6'5", point guard that was just a lockdown defender. So there was always going to be a, a crazy defender on Stephen Curry. Also, they had uh, a sixth man of the year on their team, Tony Kukoc. And I do want to get into this story before anything else because Tony Kukoc, before he was on the Bulls, the Bulls general manager spoke very highly of him in public, in practice, whenever he could. And Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen got offended because of how openly he was singing the praises of this Tony Kukoc guy who wasn't even on the team. It, they felt disrespected because, I mean, like, he was talking about someone else instead of the team. And when it came time for those three guys to face off in the Olympics, Michael and Scotty took it upon themselves personally to demolish and destroy the confidence of Tony Kukoc in that game. Tony Kukoc had no idea what was going on, but in the head of Michael and Scotty, it was just, it was dead set that they were going to make his life a living hell on the basketball court and they were going to harass him and make his life miserable. Tony Kukoc is a lot stronger and a lot bigger than Stephen Curry and he couldn't handle that pressure. Yes, Curry is quicker. Yes, Curry um, can pull up from distance, but I feel as though the pressure of Jordan and Scotty alone, not to mention Ron Harper and that team defense, would have been enough to actually defeat the Warriors. You gotta keep in mind that this was a younger Warriors team and they weren't as experienced and as savvy as they are now. They were able to get by because of their knowledge and their experience um, and their greatness, of course, when they did add Kevin Durant at the next year. But before then, they were still learning. They were just figuring out how good they could be. And that's the reason why I think that the Bulls would still have beaten the Warriors, even though they did get one more win at the end of the year. Honestly, though, you can't really compare the two generations, uh, two different eras. But even if you want to go a little further than that, I feel as though Michael Jordan's ISO play would have been enough to neutralize the team defense of the Warriors. And if they did double and help, he would have just passed to the open man. He wasn't as opposed to getting assists as many people think. He averaged like four or five or six or something like that um, for his career. So he was always a willing passer, but he was more so a willing scorer. And he was willing to cut you down and tear you apart in front of your face and do it himself rather than have someone else do it. And then he'll let you know about it. So let me know in the comment section below which team you think is the better team. Personally, I am on the side of the Chicago Bulls team. Um, not necessarily because the Warriors lost the championship or anything like that, but just because of the matchup and how things would have stacked up. So yeah, let me know in the comment section below. I ended up fouling out of this game. Harrison Barnes tried to get his revenge and he actually balled out, but in the end, it wasn't enough. Um, I didn't want to simulate ahead because the game was so close and there was still a lot of time. So I wanted to see if we can pull away for a little bit and actually make a little bit of a sizable lead. Because at this point, it was like, uh, you know what? Maybe they might actually make a play. Uh, they ended up not making a play and Cousins being slow back on the offensive end did make this three pointer. And at this point, I felt safe. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. We ended up beating Harrison Barnes and his Mavericks. Thank you guys again. Have a good one. See you next episode.